Okay, today I really quickly want to showcase what I believe to be the fastest loot and materials farm in the entire Outriders game. Now, I don't say that lightly. I'm not trying to clickbait you. I genuinely believe this is the fastest way to farm gear, crafting materials, such as titanium primarily, stat shards, credits, and weapon or gear perks in the entire game. If there's something better to be found, let me know. I'll pin a comment or something like that. But like I said, I wouldn't post it unless I thought it was genuinely the best method of farming in the game, bar none. It's pretty simple, and in the background, I'll have sped up footage of myself farming it in World Tier 10 from level 29 to level 30. Now, before anyone goes and references Endgame, because yeah, that's not true Endgame, the Technomancer build I've been starting to round out will deal more than enough damage at any World Tier and Challenge Tier for that matter, so this will carry through no matter what level you are, and can also be done with, like, items that are multiple levels too low. It's very easy. The basic premise is Blighted Rounds. This game has ass backwards balancing and Blighted, Volcanic, or Twisted Rounds for Trickster, Pyromancer, and Technomancer with infinite ammo generation end up, I believe, comprising almost all the endgame build compositions that I've yet seen or tried. So yeah, the balancing is pretty bad. Grab some gear with high firepower, that's really all you need, get your Blighted, Twisted, or Volcanic Rounds honestly, a high capacity gun, that's it, hell even a sniper works for this spot, and head over to the dunes. This is the part that needs a tiny bit more explaining. In the game there are hunts, which most people probably already know, but what they might not know is that you can reset the hunts after doing all of them and get a guaranteed legendary item. Hold up, that's not the farming method, just an important thing to know. Reason it needs to be said is that one particular hunt in the dunes, where you hunt the waras, is how we farm all of this gear. If you did that hunt already, or you just haven't unlocked it yet, just get to the point in the campaign where it becomes available, or go do all the rest of the hunts and reset them at the guy in the tavern in the trench. Pretty easy, you just go there, turn them all in and say, oh, new season, and then you have all the hunts again. Then come to the dunes and start the process. I'll show it in the background right now. What you do is complete all of the stages till you get to the ending portion. Again, in the background, you just get the hunt, collect it, and then go through like one or two areas and get to the final portion where the two Wara bosses will be standing. You pop your damage combo, whatever it may be, walk around the corner, and light them up. These guys have, proportionately at least, less health than almost any other boss, hunt, or even elite in the entire game. They die fast, and they have an easy crit spot to hit, which makes the process that much quicker and easier. And they drop numerous pieces of independent loot influenced by your world tier. What they also drop is titanium, and once you have killed both, just let the other adds kill you, and you spawn five feet away, ready to do it again. Reasons why this is better than all the other farming methods I've seen yet? You don't need to do anything for these to spawn. There isn't a prerequisite number of adds that you have to kill, they're always there. You can kill them faster, owing to their crit spot, by far, with the wide range of builds that are available to almost any class, and you get two sets of boss drops from the same run. Compared to anything else, that's insane. And when doing this for maybe 10, ish minutes, I gained a level, half a world tier, like 600 titanium, and my inventory, as well as my stash, was completely filled to the point where items that dropped were auto-deconstructing, and I was getting weapon stats and perks faster than I have ever seen. Now, not my entire stash was full, but the weapons were full, and everything else had maybe a dozen or so items on top of my inventory being completely filled as well. Now, many people will probably know that you can go to the crafting NPC in your camp and raise attributes, levels, or change perks on gear, but getting the materials to do that can take time. If you use this method, you will get thousands of attribute points in maybe an hour, and I'm talking all of the attribute points. Thousands of titanium, hundreds of items. You will max out all the tier two perks with ease while you deconstruct, and if you wanna sell those items to vendors, you will get hundreds of thousands, if not millions of credits. Another interesting thing is that these two bosses provide enough world tier experience to where you are still gaining, at least on world tier 10, when killing them and allowing yourself to die, which would normally subtract from that experience bar. So this will not even bring down your current progress. It will most likely increase it. And even if at the higher tiers, which I sincerely doubt, it were to result in negatives, you can just wait till either tier 15 or right after you hit a level and execute the method with ease and not lose anything. I had kind of told myself I wouldn't post smaller things like this on the channel, seeing as the main content I produce is commentary and reviews now, almost exclusively, but I do plan to do a best Outrider tips video, containing more things like this, especially how to use blue item crafting bases, quest scaling, mob scaling in the beginning versus end game areas, etc, etc. I am also partway through my review for the game, which won't actually be as glowingly positive as I first thought. I am thoroughly enjoying myself and will continue to do so, but 
the build diversity has some hidden pitfalls. And when combined with a certain degree of false depth, as well as the rampant server instability the first few days, I believe it to be a game with insane potential. Seriously, it is. But it will need a bit of work, and definitely, no doubt in my mind at all, a couple huge balancing passes to round it out. Example, just really quickly, there is a tier 3 mod for the Trickster, which allows Twisted Rounds to regenerate ammo on a killing blow, which is basically the fundamental premise of all the endgame builds that are finding success at the moment. Maybe not all, but it's like, it's it's a really slim metagame at the moment. That's hard to obtain, right? A tier 3 mod is very hard to obtain. It's attached, I believe, to a legendary item, which is not easy to get, but there is a tier 1 item for the Technomancer that does exactly the same thing and can be acquired at like level three or something, turning the ability into an absolutely god tier killing spree button. That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but hopefully with this new farming method you can not only acquire thousands of titanium in a very, very short amount of time, but also all of the perks you could ever want, all of the stat shards for charging up gear that you could ever need, all of the credits, the titanium, the loot, etc, etc, basically everything in the game. It really is the best that I've seen without question. That's really it. Like I said, working on the review and a full Essential Tips rundown right now, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. In the meantime, I'll leave you with some of my previous footage when I first discovered this method so you can see it in real time. Have a nice night.